Originally, forensic architecture referred to the careful and systematic analysis of the structural conditions of a building. But the forensic architects at Goldsmiths, University of London, see their role differently. We are like architectural detectives. What we do is that we go into war zones, into situations where human rights were violated or war crimes were um, alleged to have, to have taken place. And we look at the traces that that violence is, leaves on buildings. We look at buildings as documents. We can read them. We can see uh, the way in which they were destroyed. We can reconstruct from it uh, what has destroyed them, what weapons and ammunition have been used. Was there, was there a firefight uh, around that building? Uh, was it destroyed by a bomb? Was it destroyed by artillery, uh, by tank, by gunfire? When you see patterns, repetition, and systemic violation, you can see that behind there is a military strategy and perhaps an intention uh, to undertake those violations. And this is what we are trying to find out. Together with Amnesty International, these building detectives have been carrying out an investigation into alleged war crimes by the Israeli military during the Gaza conflict of 2014. They spent a year gathering all the available evidence. Satellite photographs, stills, user-generated footage, broadcast news videos, Israeli troops pushed deeper into Gaza. witness testimonies, <laughs> military press releases, and information from social media websites. We scan all of that. We take all those sources of information and we try to make order in them. Traditionally, analysis of events in human rights context looks only at satellite imagery and before and after photographs. What we have today is a situation in which the event is captured from multiple directions. Perhaps 10, 15 um, uh, smartphones would record, or, or cameras, would record the same event from, from multiple point of view. And they can build a computerized 3D model. In this case, the city of Rafa at the southern end of the Gaza Strip. And locate each photograph, each piece of video and each piece of information in space and time to investigate an event and analyse precisely what happened. The story will never be caught within one image or one bit of video alone. It exists in the relation between those various sources, in cross-referencing them. Forensic architecture has pioneered and perfected a series of scientific techniques to help establish the time of events, like plume analysis. Every plume is, is unique to the strike and unique to the moment. So the, the evolution of the plume really gives us a very accurate, accurate description of time. If we are able to say that in two different photographs we see exactly the same morphology of the plume, it means that those two photographs are taken exactly in the same time because this form will not repeat itself twice. Because we look at the plumes three-dimensionally, if you have more than one image in which the same plume appears, you can cross-reference the images and know exactly where the strike happened. So plume is a way of geosyncing, of time-space synchronization of the battlefield. Shadow analysis is another one of what they call their physical clocks. Shadow analysis is a process of finding the time of a particular event through analyzing the observed shadows found in a photograph or video. We go through a process of firstly locating the camera very accurately and orienting it, so finding the angle that the footage was taken from, then simulating the environment by creating a virtual camera in a 3D environment that matches exactly the camera that was used, even the lens distortion, and run a sun simulation essentially that matches the shadows of uh, the found footage with our virtual camera. Forensic investigation of every frame in video footage 
can even help identify the size of a single aerial bomb. High-definition satellite photographs are used to map both the destruction to property and to analyse each bomb and shell crater. A one-ton bomb would clearly completely destroy a significantly si sized building and create an enormous crater. But the blast air of that one-ton bomb would be several hundred metres around as well and would cause civilian injury, deaths to non any non-combatants in, in the close proximity. In the whole sort of sphere of military forensics, I mean, it's pu not purely craters. Obviously, craters in its spherical form is primarily caused by an artillery shell, perhaps a mortar shell, um, and most certainly by an aerial drop bomb. But we're also looking at the effect of tank shells, which are usually fired horizontal, and that has its own specific signature on a building or on a, on a structure or on a target. And to analyse other forms of destruction, they use a different form of remote sensing, NDVI. NDVI stands for Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, and this is a common tool used in remote sensing to find where healthy trees or crops are located. So this satellite captures tanks in movement, it captures uh, destroyed trees and croplands that have been bulldozed or run over by tanks, it captures smoke plumes. It's really a snapshot of the conflict as it's progressing. So not only can we study and understand some of the strategy behind where the tanks are going, where the bulldozers are going during the conflict, we can also measure a great amount of vegetative change in a very short period of time. So we have great certainty that this change resulted from the conflict. And all these techniques have been employed to reveal fresh evidence in unprecedented detail of what happened on the darkest day of the conflict, the 1st of August 2014 in Rafa known as Black Friday. I believe it's an ideal partnership. On the one hand, forensic architecture have the technical wizardry, they have the ability to forensically analyse satellite images and video footage. Amnesty International comes along with its extensive research in, with witness te testimonies to what happened during the 2014 conflict. Put that together and you have really an incredibly powerful combination. Uh, of corroborating information that allows us to draw out patterns of violations that throw up a case for hu uh, human rights violations and war crimes having been committed.